Number 11. Consider this scenario and answer the following questions. On a mid-August day in the northeastern United States, the following information appeared in the local newspaper. Atmospheric pressure at sea level, 29.97 inches of mercury, 1,013.9 millibar. Letter A. What is the pressure in kilopascal? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, if this was a complete sentence that was in the local newspaper, uh, yeah, that's, that's not a sentence, so, right. Now, this is kind of, uh, tricky, because, first off, I don't really like the wording of this. They said, you know, in the local newspaper, atmospheric pressure at sea level, 29.97 inches of mercury, comma, 1,013.9 millibar. What they're trying to express is that these two units of pressure, remember a millibar, or a bar, and a distance amount in mercury is bulk pressure units. So they were just trying to say that these two are equivalent to each other. Okay, it's not like, you know how sometimes they say, like with time, it's like 12 hours and 13 minutes, and the total time you would have to add together? You don't have to do that here. This is expressing that 29.97 inches of mercury is the same as 1,013.3 millibar. So... You don't have to take both of them. You just got to take one of them. And you just have to find the pressure in kilopascals. So for us, what's easier, I think, is working with the 29.97 inches of uh, mercury, okay? Because usually we see uh, the, the millimeters of mercury, but instead here we have inches. So we would just have to convert to kilopascals. Now... Generally speaking, the unit is mmHg, right? Not inches. IN stands for inches of mercury. So the first thing we would have to do is, for letter A, is we would have to express the 29.97 inches of mercury somehow into millimeters of mercury. So we're just working with distance units. Don't even worry about the, the mercury. And then we can get to kilopascals. So how do we do that? Well, we go back all the way to the beginning of chemistry when we did inches to millimeter conversion. So I wrote this down, right? Usually we know how to go from an inch to a centimeter. That's standard. One inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. So we would go to centimeters first. And then from centimeters, I can get to millimeters. So that's the whole thing over here. So let's just first work to get to millimeters of mercury, and then we could go to kilopascal. So start with what you're given, 29.97 millimeters of mercury. Whoop, not millimeters of mercury, inches. It's just a habit. Anytime I talk about mercury, it's got to be in millimeters. So times by a ratio. Now, you can put inches of mercury Right? You can include the Hg, but you don't have to. Um, I'll just put the inch, right? So I'll say inch, and then I'll put centimeter, right? So remember, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So one inch, the one goes with the inch, and then for the centimeters, there's 2.54 centimeters, so that goes on the top. Okay, the inches cancel out, and now we're left with centimeters of mercury. But we need to get to millimeters of mercury, so one more conversion, right? Times by a ratio. Centimeters now you don't want anymore, so that goes on the bottom. And you want millimeters, right? Because the general unit for pressure, if we're talking about it in mil mercury, is millimeters. So... We could do the long, you know, conversion going back from centimeters to meters to millimeters, and you could totally do that. You'll get the same answer. But here's a shorthand version, guys. Just know that for every one centimeter, you got 10 millimeters. Kind of makes it a little bit easier. So for every 10 millimeters, you got one centimeter. And then the unit centimeter cancels out, and now you're left with millimeters of mercury. So maybe I'll just stick that over here. Now I have millimeters of mercury. Just so that it's together. But now, we don't want millimeters of mercury. So 
you can, you know, get your answer here and then work from that. But we try not to round until the very end. So I'm just going to keep going with it, right? Can I go from millimeters of mercury to kilopascal? Sure. I have the conversions down here. Now, it just depends. This case, you have 101,325 pascal, but they want to get it into kilopascal. So remember, if you want to go from a pascal to a kilo or anything to a kilo from a base unit, so like grams to kilograms or liters to kiloliter, you would always just divide by 1,000. So if I take this number and I divide it by 1,000, this decimal, well, this, uh, what is this called? Apostrophe? No, that's not an apostrophe. Apostrophe is up here. A comma. This comma turns into a decimal, and now it is kilopascal. So now this would be 101.325 uh, kilopascal. So now let's get to it. Times by a ratio. Millimeters of mercury now goes on the bottom. And maybe I'll put that in blue. And the kilopascals goes up on the top, right? And now just take the numbers that you need from here. Millimeters of mercury equals kilopascal. 760 millimeters of mercury equals 101.325 kilopascals. So the 101... 0.325, and then the 760. Millimeters of mercury cancel out, and now we're just left with kilopascals. So that's the answer to the first one. So I have 29.97, 29.97 times 2.54, times 10, times 101.325, divided by 760, and since we started with four sig figs, technically we should end with four sig figs. So this would be 101, 101.5 KTU. Just kidding. It's not a radio station. 101.5 KPA. Now that's a radio station. There we go. 101.5 kilopascals. And that's equivalent to 29.97 inches of mercury. And then letter A is done. Now for letter B. It says, the pressure near the seacoast in the northeastern United States is usually reported near 30 inches of mercury. During a hurricane, the pressure may fall to nearly 28 inches of mercury. Calculate the drop in pressure in Tor. Okie dokie. So maybe I'll put a little barrier here. And I'll say letter B. So we want to basically calculate the fall or the drop in pressure in Tor. Now, generally speaking, they did say that, you know, in the Northeast United States, the pressure is roughly 30.0 inches of mercury. But then during a hurricane, the pressure will fall to nearly 28. So we're going from 30 to 28.0 inches of mercury. They want us to calculate the drop. How far did this drop? Well, from 30 to 28, there's a difference of 2, right? If you just subtract 30 minus 28, you get a 2.0 inch of mercury different difference. This is what we have to convert, right? They want us to calculate that drop, the 2 inches of mercury, in Tor. So... Maybe for this, what I will do is I will, uh, well, if you want to pause the video because we actually need more space. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this. This is the only thing I'm going to get rid of basically. So just pause the video and maybe, oh, before I do that, I'm just going to take this, move this up here. That's the answer for A. And then I'm going to get rid of this. So bye-bye. And now I'm going to say B. We just need to convert the drop, which was two inches of, of mercury, into Tor. So, let's try to do it again. 
Basically, we have to get it into millimeters of mercury again, remember? So we're going to have to do some of the same steps. So start with what you're given, 2.0 inches of mercury. Got to get to millimeters because I need to get there in order to get to tor. So times by the ratio, let's go to centimeters first. Inches on the bottom, centimeters up top. For every 2.54 centimeters, there's one inch. That gets rid of the inches. We got to get to millimeters. We're at centimeters. So times by a ratio again. You guys are getting it. Centimeters on the bottom. Millimeters up top. And now remember, one centimeter for every 10 millimeters. So 10 millimeters equals uh, one centimeter. Cancel out the centimeters. And now you're left with millimeters of mercury. So I'm just going to put millimeters of mercury HG just so that they're together. They're together again. Finally. Okay. So now we just need to convert to Tor. So one more conversion. I know you guys got this. Times by a ratio, millimeters of mercury on the bottom and Tor on the top. Now look here, guys. For every 760 Tor, there's 760 millimeters of mercury. It's a one-to-one -one conversion. Basically, it's the same unit, right? If you have 760 Tor, you got 760 millimeters of mercury. If you have one Tor, you got one millimeter of mercury. So we could basically have stopped here found this number, and then just said, okay, it's the same thing in Tor. But just so that we have it, you know, we'll say 760 for every 760, but the numbers cancel out to 1. So you don't even have to calculate that part. But the millimeters of mercury will cancel out, and now you're left with Tor. So let's see. 2 times 2.54 times 10, and that's it. Um, sig figs, there was two sig figs here, so technically we should have two sig figs, so 51. And that is 51 tor, which is the same thing as 51 millimeters of mercury. And there you go. Letter B is done, and this question's done. What do you guys think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, and I hope to see you in later lessons. Be well. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.